So, for those who've seen me videos of me before, they're sort of, this is a different surroundings, this is not the studio, no, it's a beautiful day here in Heemstede, which is near Amsterdam in Holland. And um, it's a different thing today altogether. I was sitting here in my little garden shed or whatever it's called, and I was looking at, at, at the YouTube channel, which I now have up and running for a year. I was sort of evaluating it and analyzing it, and I saw that I had videos with views between 600 and 800,000. And I tried to figure out, you know, why some videos get so much views and why some don't. Obviously, the ones with the CS80 score really well. And uh, on average, the covers score really well. Um, but there seems to be a discrepancy between what I think was stuff that I did pretty well uh, and the ones that got many views. So, sitting here, watching outside, enjoying the sun, I thought I will my, make my own, put together my own top 10 of my favorite covers. The ones that I like most and I will explain to you why I like them. So, without further ado, I'll start on number 10 where I have Exit by Tangerine Dream. Um, I, I, I started to discover Tangerine Dream only a few years ago, strangely enough. Um, and why I like this particular piece is because it features the Obram OBX in a sync mode, uh, which I think is, is an outstanding sound of the instrument and has been used by Tangerine Dream, I think many times. So on number 10, Exit by Tangerine Dream. No worries, I don't have the, a, a compilation of the whole songs. I actually took out like between 20 to 30 second pieces. And in this case, on number nine, it's Tears and Rain. Um, and I specifically chose the end of it. And I see from my statistics that a lot of people don't even see the end. They sort of uh, leave after a minute. Um, and the reason I chose it because the covers I make, I, I don't, you know, make an exact cover. I sort of use it as an inspiration for my own music. And in this case, the, the song ends on an E-flat major 7, if I'm correct. And while making it, I just couldn't sort of keep myself from playing a improvised Rhodes solo over it. And looking back on it, with the CS80 sound effects on the, on the background, the pads and then the sound of, of uh, a beautiful suitcase I, I own. I'm actually pretty <laughs> happy with the result. So probably for a lot of viewers, this will be the first time that they see my Anne Solo in Tears in Rain. Number seven, an older recording I did probably three or four years ago, maybe even longer, and you will see it because you will see if you follow me instruments that you haven't seen before and I actually don't own anymore. It starts with the bass line on the Oberheim Expander. I moved from the Expander to the OB8 to the OBX. So um, at the end of the day, that's my sound. Um, Top Gun is one of my favorite movies. Uh, 
and it has a lot to do with a beautiful soundtrack. The opening with, with, with the drum echoing or the delay on the 808, the beautiful pad and the real version on the Jupiter 8, which back then I didn't own. And I used the, um, the Kira. And actually, if you <laughs> see reviews on the keyboard, nobody likes the Kira. And I still have it, and I hope from this short piece that you will see that the Kira can do uh, beautiful Jupiter and, and PPG uh, pads. And again, I don't know about you, but every time I see the movie and, and this intro starts, it sort of brings tears in my eyes. I really like it very much. Well, been, it hasn't been watched, I don't know, less than a thousand times, so uh, I'm curious what you think of it. And now on the real number seven, because I didn't want to reshoot the take. Um, again, Tangerine Dream, uh, but in a different version, because I play the melody of Grand Theft Auto on the CS80, which I think uh, works pretty well, and also on the Minimoog. Uh, it shows the versatility of Tangerine Dream that started in uh, probably end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, with these beautiful, long, psychedelic pieces. And somewhere end of the 70s and the 80s, they made all these soundtracks and there's a second, there will be a second one, which is one of my favorite pieces by them. But Grand Theft Auto, very effective, to the point melody of this uh, great German band, Tangerine Dream. To Vangelis on number six. Um, I think uh, this really sounds really great with the pads, uh, but it hasn't been viewed uh, very much. And I think the reason is I see that uh, videos I make where you see the interest instruments and you see me playing score much better than in this case a video where I took Antarctic pictures because that's the song uh, and added my music to these beautiful visuals of a you know of, of snow and ice and water um, enjoy it not many people have seen it five the third uh, cover of tangerine dream this is probably the oldest cover i've ever made um, and it has been seen less than a thousand times also here probably the same within uh, antarctic echoes is the fact that you don't see me playing you see trains 
It's again a beautiful composition and looking back on it, listening to it, what I especially like is I slowed it down quite a lot. It's much faster in real life. And I've added a Yamaha CP70, the grand piano. And I think this is one of the best covers I've made. Um, so I hope this short version gives you an idea of how I did. And you know, if you like it, have a look at the, um, at the long video. It will be interesting to see whether that picks up a little bit. across this monastery of La Rabida by, on, uh, by Vangelis for the movie 1492. I didn't know that song and it inspired me to do a, sh a very atmospheric improvisation partly, well, mostly on the, uh, on the CP70. And I was positively surprised by the very positive feedback I got on that. Um, and as I said, this is also an analysis of what works and what doesn't work. Obviously, it's clear that also here you see me playing, which people prefer. But I also think that not just making a cover like with, uh, with the other ones, but giving it my own interpretation and actually using the, the, the soundtrack, the song, as a starting point for, for, for my creativity and my sound is something that I think is what comes across best. So I will do that more and I will also try to make longer versions and just not only stop at like two or three minutes because fortunately there are people, viewers out there, that do appreciate longer, uh, longer songs. Monastery of La Rabida on number three, four, whatever. This is where it all started, my love for Vangelis. Uh, I Hear You Now was a, quite a interesting, not Vangelis, Vangelis. I get a lot of feedback that I say Vangelis as opposed to Vangelis. Most people in Holland say Vangelis. I know it's Vangelis, so uh, Vangelis. Um, but the challenge here was that uh, it's sung by John Anderson and I don't have a singer. So I took the, uh, the CP70 and the mini mode to sort of let them sing, play the melody. And I, that worked out really nice. Uh, looking at the song, the fact that this arpeggio stays throughout the song is, is, is something that Vangelis uses quite a lot and I think is just brilliant. Uh, and also the sound effects is just... And, and in this case, the opening or the you know, the, the, the thing with the CS80, well, here I'm lucky that I have that thing and it works really well in, uh, in the song. <laughs> Thank you. 
like Tangerine Dream, also Jan Hammer is one of these extraordinary phenomena, I, I would say, because he played improvised jazz rock back in the days, in the beginning of the 70s. Uh, and then he, he produced the soundtrack of Miami Vice, which when I was around 20 to 30 was a big movie or, or television hit here in, in the Netherlands. Um, the combination of the Fairlight, the Jupiter 8, the Lindrum creates this, you know, great 80s, uh, 80s tune and, 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 and what he does playing um, the guitar, a distorted guitar, which is for me a frustration actually. I would love to be a great guitar player playing distorted solos. But, well, Jan Hammer showed the way uh, for us as, uh, as keyboard players that we can get a really decent distorted guitar sound. Miami Vice, excellent, beautiful composition on number two. <laughs> Number one, it's where it all started. I'll tell you a story. Dr. Mix had this competition where you had to play an 80s soundtrack in 80 seconds. It's around a year ago. Well, I missed the 80 seconds. I only saw 80s soundtrack. And I thought, well, why don't I try to not take, let's say, obvious 80s synth music. I'll take the, the, the score of Bounty by Vangelis. And uh, since I have the CS80, you know, for me it's, you know, I can really get that sound. And I sent it into the competition and it was part of, of, of Dr. Mix's edit. And I got uh, enormous reactions to it also from Dr. Mix himself. Uh -oh. You've got a Jupiter A, you've got a Fender Road. The Super JX, I want the I want my Super JX back. I used to have it. I want it. I may buy it again. Link's wrong. JD 990, JD880. CP70? Dude! What? Mini Mark? For bass, duh. Yeah, I agree. Tape echo, mod filter. That's a lot of gear you got there. Oh, look at that shot. Oh, you've got all behind down there. 909 here. Oh, this is the Waldorf, isn't it? What have you got down here? I can see your pages. And I actually, to be honest, felt really guilty but I, because I didn't do it in 80 seconds, which was the challenge. It took me two days. But the good news is I never got any negative comments on it. Uh, and given the enormous nice and positive feedback I got on, on the score, on the cover, that's when I decided to start my channel and we're now um, we're going in the direction of 5,000, which I've never, never dreamt of. I, I, you know, my goal was a couple of hundred viewers. So uh, thanks to all of you who, who watch my videos and thanks to the ones that actually come to this point in this video. My compliments. Um, a short piece of the end, the closing titles of Bounty. And... Um, well, keep following me. There's a lot of music out there and uh, I will not stop doing this. See you next time.
imagine that I never grew up with the, uh, with the idea to become famous or to become a professional musician or to become a composer. I mean, all those things they didn't have anything. I mean, no meaning to me. And they still don't have now.